All organisms require an energy supply for cell activities such as growth and division. Producers of green plants and make their own food using light energy from the sun, water and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Consumers are herbivores, carnivores and omnivores and cannot make their own food. Consumers obtain their energy by eating other organisms, such as a bear eating berries and ants for its energy. Here is a simple feeding relationship. The grass is eaten by the caterpillar. A bird then comes and munches the caterpillar and the party is ruined by the cat. A straightforward food chain is used to show this, with the arrows representing energy flow. However, food chains in a normal ecosystem are far more complex. Plants will have a number of primary consumers and these consumers will have a range of predators. A food web, which is simply a range of interconnecting food chains, better represents the flow of energy in a typical ecosystem. If one species is lost from a food web, all the others are affected. If we remove this ground beetle, it leaves only the wool spider with the beetle larvae to eat, who eventually die out as the wool spider eats too much of them. The wool spider now has no food left so it dies out too. This increases the populations of snails and millipedes, as they have no predators. They eat all the leaves, in turn starving the woodlouse, earwig and themselves to death. Don't panic, that's extreme. Of course, ecosystems have more to them than just a free-for-all food war. Other relationships include plants regulating oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air, bees pollinating plants, vital for plant reproduction, and plants providing a home for animals. Of course, don't forget the human race. We are hugely dependent on the natural world too. We need food to eat, raw materials to build homes and make clothing, and medicine to keep us healthy. Created using Powtoon.